Hello, well, glory to Jesus Christ, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So, just had a revelation this morning, th thinking about the video I made yesterday, and thinking about, like, going further on that point. So, there's like three, I haven't made any notes, I just want to talk, because there's three points I want to make. And so, just got to try to get them out before I forget them, because I'm very forgetful. So, the first point was, when you're searching for truth, and when you're trying to figure something out, there's an important question that I think should come to mind early in whatever you're investigating in into this is an important question i think that you should ask and try to answer and that is why am i trying to figure this out why am i trying to figure this out this particular thing that i'm looking into why because often i find myself looking into subjects and then yeah the question comes up why am i looking into this if i find the answer to this question how's that going to help me how's it going to help me to get closer to god how's it going to help me understand the truth because there are a lot of vain things that you can look into. And so asking that question early on in your search, why am I looking into this? If, if you can't answer that question, or if that question comes up with a, well, you know, a stupid answer, then you shouldn't be looking into it. But I think it, it helps to frame your understanding, like frame your, frame your search for truth. Why am I trying to figure this out? How does this thing that I'm trying to figure out fit into the big picture? And that will help you when you're... Like, there's a lot of people who, they read, like, the Book of Enoch, for example, and then they get involved in trying to figure out what the angels are doing and stuff like that. And I think if they were to ask, why am I looking into this? Then I think that would help reframe. Because remember, the, the important thing is Jesus and the cross, ultimately. It's the gospel. And that's, the, that's really the, the rock, the root thing. And anything that you look into should probably be, in some way, centered around that. You know, we're, we're fallen and we need a savior and everything. Like there's, there's a lot you can build upon that. A lot you can, I mean, that's how, but that's like the, the fundamental, at least at this point in history, that's the fundamental thing you should be building on. And there are a whole lot of other revelations that add additional light onto that, uh, additional understanding, additional perspectives onto that. But it's just that question, why am I looking into this? I think it's helpful and you know if you're if you're looking into like if you're watching a lot of mainstream media at the moment i recommend well okay i won't recommend anything i'll say my personal journey i'm not looking at the news very much i, I still follow what's going on a little bit to just keep track of what's going on in the world but i don't look into things too deeply because i don't see any point really this it's basically just lies but so just that question i wanted to put that present that as an option for you maybe you should consider adding that into your thought processes why am i looking into this i try to answer that why am i looking at what, what's the answer to this question going to why, why is the answer to this question going to help me so that's one thing the next point is humility and i want to talk about humility and why that's important if you are not humble then basically what that means is that you assume you're in a position where you're assuming that you know the truth and if you're in a position where you you're assuming that you know the truth or or you're in a position where you think you're good like you're good at something or you know you've got it sorted out then growth is difficult from that point it's like like uh, arrogance is an end point you might say humility is a growth point so be humble in your search and don't assume that you've ever reached the end point because you haven't <laughs> there's always you'd You'll be surprised as you go along in your search for truth. And, you know, if you've already done it for a while, you'll, you'll already know this, but you'll be surprised as to how deceived you are <laughs> or how deceived you were, let's say. I mean, I've thought many times, oh, I'm awake now. Oh, I'm, I understand what's going on now. But no, I didn't. <laughs> you, you can always refine your understanding. You can always learn more. There's no limit. Like you haven't, you're not God yet. You haven't figured out everything that God knows yet. There's always things to learn. So humility is important. Humility is a point of growth. Arrogance and thinking that you know, that's a point of, it's an end point. It's a point of death, basically. It's where you've stopped growing. So there's that point. And then the other point was reflecting on, okay, there are these evil spirits and you know, I was talking about dreams in the last video, and they can create reality. And I was talking about you know the base reality, learning what the base reality is, which is you know the word of God. It's God's reality. It's the truth. Learning what the truth is, and how when you learn the truth, you can then you know you're overcoming the lies and you're coming back and you're living in the real world basically. You're living in the truth. 
And why is that important? Well, it stands to reason that if these evil spirits can create false realities in the in the dreamlike sense, so you might say in the spiritual world, and also in the real world, they can create these lies upon lies, but not necessarily even lies upon lies, just different ways of looking at things. And if you like you think of computer games, for example, I mean or a movie, like they're fantasy, and it can be enjoyable to go into the fantasy world for a period of time. But then after that period of time, you want to come back into the real world and you know reconnect with base reality. And if you don't know what base reality is, then you can't do that. And one of the problems, I think, with like, the world and the lies is that people forget what base reality is and they get lost in the dream. And then they're forever stuck in this dream world. And then, I mean, that's bad because you're not connected with base reality. But it's also bad because whoever's controlling the reality in which you live in is your god, essentially. They're in, they have complete, complete power over you because they're controlling the the ground on which you walk, basically. They're, they're controlling the things that you perceive and how you perceive them. And so you want that you want that person who's controlling the reality that you live in to be God. You know, all-powerful, loving God who, who wants to take care of you. And it's, it's okay to spend time in like thinking about other things, but ultimately you want to spend time with God. And it stands to reason that if these evil spirits and things can create false realities, uh, create like create create spiritual realities and things, it stands to reason that we also will be able to once we have our glorified bodies and the, the eternal the eternal nature of things. Like I, I've thought about like how how is it going to be the case that we're all going to be sons of God, and we're all going to be living on the earth, and we all have the power. You know, if we have faith the the size of a a mustard seed, we can move mountains. Well, it doesn't make sense to me that it would be millions of people. Like, I don't know how many million, I don't know how many people are going to be living in God's kingdom, but it doesn't make sense to me that there would be that many people all with that immense power to move mountains, all living together, all exercising that power. It, it's like, a, it's, it's too much power all in one place. So it makes sense to me that we can also create these spiritual realities, these own realms that we can go and live in and have experiences in. And if that's the case, then we need to be well accustomed with what the base reality is so that after we've done that, after you know, we've got a group of friends together and we've manifested a, you know, a water slide park with amazing water slides in it and we're all going down, we're having fun on these water slides and this is all, you know, the figment of our imagination and we're having fun in this thing. But then after a while, we need to remember that that's not reality. That's just something we're doing for fun and we've got to come back to base reality. So I think if it's the case that we're going to, and it's, it seems obvious, uh, not obvious, it seems to stand to reason that we will have this power in the future. So we need to love base reality and not get lost in the illusion. So those are the three points I wanted to make. I you know, didn't make any notes. So I don't know how that's come out. But yeah, so why why are you trying to learn this thing? <laughs> why are you trying to figure out the answer to this question? How's that going to help you to understand the big picture? And humility would be the second one. You need to be humble and not assume that you know, because humility is a point from which you can grow. Just being arrogant and thinking you know is a point where... It's a, it's a dead end, dead end. And then, yeah, if we, we need to be accustomed with base reality so that then we can go out and explore. I get, yeah, that's the other point. The, the freedom, you know, Jesus gives us freedom and we've got liberty. We've got freedom within God's kingdom. What does that mean? Well, if you're stuck in, a, in, a, in, an, illusion, in an illusion, and you know how, like I showed you in the last video, that people get very angry when you question their illusion, when you put you, you point out point out something that shatters their illusion. Well, that means that those people they're not free; they're trapped. They're trapped in that illusion, and they fight back violently against anybody who challenges their illusion. And so they're sort of trapped in it. And you know, in the Bible, it talks about how you know, basically Satan doesn't let their prisoners go free and you know they've got their Satan has his illusion his illusory what illusory world and he's not not letting people leave from that he's keeping people trapped in that and you know the, the escape is Jesus Jesus he's the the door of the sheep he's how you enter or exit exit the maze but because we have a strong grounding in the truth 
we can also go out into that. We can go out into the world and we can not get lost. We've always got, we've always got the door. The door is always there. It's not just a one-time thing where we can go out into the, you know, we, we come out from the world because we're still in the world. Like, you know, I'm still in the world, even though I know Jesus Christ, I'm still in the world, but I can go out if I want to, I can go out and I can do research into something or I can go, I can go and do something knowing that I still have God to come back to. Like I've, I've got the base reality to come back to. So that's, that's one of the ways in which God gives us freedom. It's not just, it's not just that we're trapped. I mean, it, in this world at this present time there's some fairly significant restrictions on what we can do and the world is evil and all that type of stuff but we don't get lost because we're constantly in the word and so we can go out and we can explore these other other things and overcome these deceptions and yeah, so that, that gives us freedom we're not trapped into believing a particular dogma we're not we're not reliant on a particular a particular illusion we don't have to protect our illusions because our base reality is the truth and the truth doesn't change the truth is fine so yeah we're free in that sense so just some points um i hope that came out i hope that was interesting may jesus bless you and keep you amen